there is no quit in America. None. All I hear from my friends on the other side is what they say is wrong with America. They keep telling us America's failing. They're wrong. When the last guy was here, you were shipping jobs to China. Now we're bringing jobs home from China. The great real estate builder, the last guy here, he didn't build a damn thing. President Biden calling out his predecessor during that Labor Day speech while touting Bidenomics. He says it's working, but poll after poll shows Americans are just not buying it as they struggle to make ends meet. Let's bring in Martha McCallum, anchor and executive editor of the story. Martha, I mean, we want to cheer on the American economy. We all agree on that. We want people to prosper and thrive, but it's also our job to, job to cover the economy as it is. Seems to be this continued disconnect from what the, the White House is touting as great economic successes of our time with how people are feeling. And the latest sort of shoe to drop is these defaults on credit card and car loans. We know interest rates have been going up. More and more people are using their credit cards to buy everyday items. And as that is happening, and I feel like, Martha, and you tell me if you've heard this as well, a lot of the economists have sort of held out and said, you know, the economy is really, it's resilient. It's been doing okay in the face of all this. They, they've said, watch the credit card debt and car loan defaults. Well, they are now ticking up and hitting a 10-year high. Credit, credit card delinquency is almost 4%. Car loan defaults, 3.6%. What is your interpretation of what's happening right now? You know, one thing I would say is that whenever all of the economists, and, and you know this well, yeah. seem to be heading in one direction, I always sort of look for the outlier yep. people and they're out there mm. and this is exactly the thing that they are pointing to is this credit card debt this is what is unprecedented in prior periods of high inflation I think as, as a country, we've become used to putting things on credit cards mm -hmm. in a way that prior generations did not do. Mm -hmm. So they would live on what they had, right? Buckle this down. Is, exactly. Yeah. So what we're seeing is people not willing to you know, do without certain things, according to these credit card numbers. Over 1.3 trillion, I think, was the credit card mm -hmm. de debt number. It's completely unprecedented. So now the rubber's hitting the road. I can't make the payment on the car, can't make the payment on the credit card. And I think this is a very, I think it's a scary moment, actually, to watch for the U.S. economy as this unfolds. It's interesting, too, that the president's doubling down on, on Bidenomics, yeah. despite the fact that the numbers show that 59% disapprove of how he's doing on the economy. So he's not only accepted this Bidenomics label, he's embracing it. He's going out there talking to blue-collar workers who are who have indicated they don't feel the economy is getting better and telling them that they should feel that it's getting better. And the poll after poll that we referenced, these, this is voters souring on Bidenomics, 58% say yeah. in this latest Wall Street Journal poll uh, that the economy has gotten worse over the past two years. Just 28% say that it's gotten better. You better believe that will play a big part if it's still like that at Election Day. Um, you mentioned they're doubling down on Bidenomics despite all of this. Here's one of his advisors, Jared Bernstein. We both know him well. He said this this morning. I think it's uh, a, a, inaccurate a, a, an inaccurate narrative to declare that somehow Bidenomics isn't working or that it's not uh, uh, favorably received by people when you drill down into what it actually is. And, and we have, and consumer prices are up. Inflation, uh, the pace of inflation, the growth of inflation has slowed, but it is still growing. Um, and, and wages, for some reason, they keep touting that wages, you know, are going up, but real wages are actually down. Um, so really interesting to watch how they're operating on that. Meantime, an update is coming shortly on the murder uh, trial. This news conference is coming 2.30 p.m. Eastern time today. Martha, fresh off of your interview uh, with his only living relative, his son Buster. Uh, just play out a bit of this. This is on the jury being swayed by the news. Listen. They didn't find a murder weapon. They didn't find any bloody clothing. There were no witnesses. Why would the jurors be inclined to go against your dad? Because of everything they had the ability to read prior to the trial. I think that people get overwhelmed and I think that they believe everything that they read and I think it took advantage of a, a jury pool in a very small town in a very small county. So what will be revealed at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time today? What new twist will we see? Yeah, I mean, we had a, a fascinating discussion yeah. with Buster Murdoch. This was only a couple of months after his father was sent to prison. He is now the only remaining member of the family. His mother and his brother yeah. slaughtered, killed uh, at their kennels at Moselle, and his father now facing the rest of his life in prison. 
Uh, this jury came back very quickly, as you remember, just after a few hours, despite the fact of the points that I just made in that soundbite of the things that the jury didn't have to lean on. But they were very decisive in that outcome. We expect that at 2.30, Dick Harputlian and Jim Griffin, who were Alec Murdoch's attorneys, will come forward and say that they believe there was jury tampering and that it was done by the clerk, uh, the Collin County clerk, um, who's, who's also uh, an important character voice in this documentary as well. Uh, she spoke to the producers separately from me of this uh, of this documentary. And she was, they say she was very heavy handed with the jury, told them not to be fooled by Alec Murdoch, all of this. This is their side, the appeals side. Mm -hmm. We'll hear from the other side, but they're going to have their moment this afternoon to, to say why they think this needs to be overturned and that they want a new trial. Fascinating. So 2.30 2 p.m. Eastern time, we'll hear from his lawyers. Yes. You'll be covering it on your show at 3 o'clock. The uh, fall of the House of Murdoch is now available on Fox Nation. People are captivated by this story. It is unbelievable. In that interview, Martha, um, people... People are still making it's, up their yeah. minds. It's stunning to hear from, from Buster Murdoch, who has never spoken about it, but he was in that trial every single day, watching it all play out. He has very strong feelings about it, and he gets uh, a chance to say what he thinks. All right, and we'll see your coverage of all of it at 3 o'clock. Martha, thank see you. Then. Thanks, right. Sandra. Okay. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.